this is hello guys this is code in code and this is 10th lecture of this segmentary series until now we have been studying mersault tree so the problem that we have been discussing in mersault tree is this given uh, uh, an array of size n and q queries of form l r and k and we have to print the total number of integers in the range l and r which are strictly smaller than k so this is the problem that we were discussing so this is the input array this is first query 1 to 5 4 that means in the range 1 to 5 in first 5 elements how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than 4 so the answer is 2 which is 1 and 3 so answer is 2 similarly for 7 to 10 which is this last 4 elements I guess uh, the number of elements which are strictly smaller than 4 again are uh, 3 1 2 and 3 so the answer is 3 so this is the problem that we have been uh, discussing one of the pro uh, one of the part that we have already covered is the implementation of the build uh, how we will be building uh, Mersault tree the structure we have already seen what is the structure of the Mersault tree Mersault tree at each node uh, stores the whole subarray which it represents and we have seen what is the structure of Mersault tree and we have also implemented the build of Mersault tree now the question is how to answer queries this is what we are going to see in this lecture so suppose there is a query of type 374 that means in the range 3 to 7 that means from here to here from 3 to 7 how many elements are there which are strictly small, uh, smaller than 4 so we can see there are two elements which are strictly smaller than 4 and those elements are 3 and 3 I mean this and this these two elements are strictly smaller than 4 so the answer of the query should be 2 because there are two elements which are strictly smaller than four so now what we are going to do we are going to perform the query operation exactly the same way that we perform in the normal segment tree so first we go to the root element we see the range is from one to eight uh, and the query range and the input range and the this range uh, this range doesn't lie completely inside a query range or this range doesn't lie completely outside our query range but there is a partial overlap and there is a partial overlap in the segmentary what you do you make two recursive call left and right and that is what we are going to do so suppose we made a recursive left call now this represents element from one to four again there is a partial overlap between the query range three to seven and this node range which is one to four so of course we would make two recursive call left and right suppose we made uh, first let's represent the left call so we made a recursive call to the left child of this node now this represents the range one to two now one to two is completely outside our query range th uh, three to seven so we would simply return zero from here zero because this is completely outside our range now the left call is completed so we would make the right call we we'll come here we see this represents three to four which lies completely inside our query range so uh, this subarray completely lies inside our query range so in this subarray we have to find how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than four now uh, since this node stores complete subarray so what we can do we can traverse each element and see how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than four and remember all of these nodes are all of these elements are in increasing order but the problem for that would be the whole uh, query would take uh, in worst case take big of n time and that is not good because if you are going to traverse the whole range what is the point of creating the segment tree you can directly do that in the normal array itself so there is no point of traversing the whole sub array so what we are going to do just just ask you a sub problem suppose you are given a sorted array and you have to answer a query how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than k so of course you can answer this question using a binary field search or binary floor search basically you can apply binary search to find the number of element which are strictly smaller than 4 so what you can do you can apply binary search to find the first element which is 4 or greater than 4 all of the element before that will be strictly smaller than 4 so what you are going to do you are going to apply binary search on this sub array and find because this is sorted so you can apply binary search so you have to find the first appearance of any element which is 4 or greater than 4 so the first appearance of any element which is 4 or greater than 4 is this at index 1 now since the index is 1 of that element that means there are zero, uh, one element before it which are strictly smaller than 
4. So we will return 1 from here. So what we did, we applied binary search. So how much time is going to take? Login time. So in login time, we are able to determine how many elements are there in this range, which are strictly smaller than 4. So from here, we have got one element. So uh, left and right call for this node is completed. So it would simply add these two and return. Now left call is completed. So let's go to the right. We see that the range uh, 4 to 8, I guess, no, 5 to 8. 5 to 8 has partial overlap with our query range 3 to 7. So what we are going to do, we are going to make two recursive calls, left and right. So let's go to the left. So now this represents, I guess, 5, 6, 5 to 6. This lies completely inside our query range. So we are going to make a, uh, make a binary search on this aware as well. Now apply binary search to find the first appearance of any element which is 4 or greater than 4. So we applied binary search and we find the index 0. Because first appearance of any element which is 4 or greater than 4 in this subarray is at index 0. That means there are 0 elements which are strictly smaller than 4. So that is why we would return 0 from here. And you can see the elements are 6 and 4. So there are 0 elements which are strictly smaller than 4. So we are returning 0 from here. Now the left call is completed. So let's go to the right. Now we see, okay, this is, yeah, this is 7 and 8. So again, there is partial overlap. So, so we would go left. We would apply binary search here. And we see there are no elements which are, uh, we would apply binary search to find the first element, which is 4 greater than 4. Now there is no element in this subarray which is 4 greater than 4. So that means all of the elements in the subarray are strictly smaller than 4. So we would return the size of the subarray which is 1. Now we would go to the right. We would make right recursive calls but this is completely outside our range. So we would return 0. Now this node has completed its left and right recursive call. So it would add these two and return the result. Similarly for this node it has completed left and right recursive call. So it would add these two and return. Similarly, for this node, we have completed left and right recursive call. So we would add these two and return two. So for this query, answer is two. As you can see, we have done nothing but applied the same thing that we do for uh, segmentary. Let me just increase the font size. So this should be good. Now we have already seen this build function. So all we have to do is go for the query. So as you can see, for each query, we have segment index, segment start, segment end, and this is query start, query end, and this is k. So if, if the current range is completely outside our query range, so segment start is greater than query end, or segment end is smaller than query start, so we would return 0. Basically, this check for the condition whether the current range is completely outside our query range. So if the current range is completely outside our query range, we would return 0. Uh, the same thing that we have done here and here and so on. So after that, if the current range is completely inside our query range, so if the current range is completely inside our query range, that means if segment start is greater than or equals to query start and segment end is less than or equals to query end. Basically, segment starts after or from query start and segment ends before or up to query end. This means the current range is completely inside our query range. If the current range is completely inside our query range, what we do, we make a like we did here. We make a binary search. I mean, we apply binary search. So this is what I'm doing here. Now, since in the segmentary, I'm storing the vector. So you can apply upper bound on vector. What upper bound does is a binary search function. It return, uh, sorry, it returns the index of the first element, which is strictly greater than k minus one. So what we are doing, we have to find the first element, which is greater than equals to k so we would apply uh, upper bound on k minus 1 so in this segment uh, in this vector the upper bound would return the index of first element which is strictly greater than k minus 1 and then just to find the number of elements or basically to find the uh, it, it actually returns the iterator to get the index you have to uh, subtract uh, dot what we call the ST, uh, vector dot begin from it to get the index of it. It actually the upper bound returns upper bound and lower bound returns the iterator to the uh, to the element which is strictly uh, greater than k minus one. Then to convert it in into index, we have to subtract vector dot begin from here. After that, this would be the index and it also represents the number of element which are strictly smaller than k. So we are returning direct that. Otherwise, if 
if the current range is not completely outside or current range is not completely inside that means there are uh, partial overlap so we would make two recursive calls to the left and the right and simply add those results and return so this is the solution of the problem that we have been discussing using Bursar tree so the I'll be giving the link of this co code I'll be uh, I'll be posting on uh, ID one and then giving the link of this code in the description so that you can study this code thoroughly so this was all for this lecture if you have any doubt or query of course you can ask on the article that i've created for this course the link of that article i'll be also giving in the description so thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you